what's going on throughout the day. Also, tensions on the Russian-Ukraine border remain high as world leaders continue to hold talks with one another. This is News 3 Now at noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. The Capitol building is having one of its busiest days of the year. Right now, both the State Senate and Assembly are in session, leading up to tonight's State of the State Address. So right now, you're taking a live look at the election integrity rally going on in the Capitol Rotunda. After the rally, attendees will visit offices of the Assembly Rules Committee members to ask them to restore election integrity to the state. Earlier today, the Capitol building was evacuated after fire alarms went off and smoke filled the media room. Fire trucks arrived moments later and the building reopened about 15 minutes after that. A malfunctioning fan caused the smoke. Tonight, Governor Tony Evers will give the State of the State address in person. It was held virtually last year. You can watch the address live on channel3000.com and tune into News 3 Now at 10 for a breakdown of what the governor said tonight. The address begins at 7 p.m. Let's head to the Weather Center now. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your certified most accurate forecast. Warm it up out there. We are starting to see your temperatures gradually get warmer day by day, and we're going to continue to warm things up. But we also have a cool down that's going to come as we go throughout the week too. So it's a little bit of a roller coaster. Temperatures aren't really going to act in the traditional fashion as we go through the next couple of days. It's 30 right now. Winds out of the southeast at 17. So the wind chill into the teens at this point. James Hill about freezing at 34. 33 in Monroe. 20s just to the north and west. The Dells and Camp Douglas coming in at 25. Doppler track generally quiet for us throughout southern Wisconsin. And there are a couple of flakes flying in central Wisconsin. But watch this. Temperatures increase to about 35. They start to decrease. Then by 12 o'clock, we go up to 38. 40s begin to move into the picture tomorrow. We're also going to be tracking chances for rain, a wintry mix, and really a bit of a headache when it comes to forecasting into Thursday, Mark. I'm going to show you all a reason why coming up in a few minutes. Another one sliding south, perhaps? Sliding south or not. <laughs> There's a reason <laughs> it's a headache, especially when you're this close in the game. All right, we'll check back, Chris. Thank you. There are signs that diplomacy is not not yet off the table to avoid a war between Russia and Ukraine. But Russia's acting actions are still being questioned. Skylar Henry has more details from the White House. Russia's defense minister announced his forces near the border with Ukraine will march home as soon as its large-scale military exercises are over. It strains credulity to think that they would have this many troops uh, arrayed along the border with Ukraine and in Bela and Belarus simply for winter exercises. The Russian military released this video. It says shows tank units heading home. And President Vladimir Putin told German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that he's ready to negotiate with NATO and the U.S. There are signs from Moscow that uh, diplomacy should continue. This gives grounds for cautious optimism. But so far, we have not seen any sign of de-escalation on the ground. These satellite images show a deployment of a new helicopter squadron and soldiers to Belgorod, Russia, just 24 miles from the border with Ukraine. And a U.S. official tells CBS News that Russia has now moved rocket launchers and long-range artillery into firing positions. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with his Russian counterpart today, and President Biden talked with French President Emmanuel Macron. But the U.S. believes a Russian attack is much more likely than its European allies do. The thing that causes the concern is the just mass array of forces uh, around Ukraine, particularly in Belarus near Kyiv. There's still a good bit of difference between how the U.S. perceives that and the way, for example, our European allies do. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin left Washington this morning to hold talks with NATO allies in Belgium. He'll also visit with U.S. troops deployed to Lithuania and Poland during his European trip. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House. And the State Department issued two new travel warnings. The U.S. is now advising Americans to avoid travel to Belarus and Moldova. Both countries are friendly with Russia and could be used to launch attacks into Ukraine.
Students at La Follette High School are showing their support for Quadrin Wilson, the man shot during an attempted arrest. Today, the students held a walkout at the school wearing all black. During the walkout, they asked for transparency from law enforcement and justice for Wilson. They also asked he be sent back to the hospital to continue his recovery. Right now, Wilson is being held in the Dane County Jail. But white police say a vehicle and home were hit by gunfire last night. The incident happened near the intersection of Summit and Royce Avenues. As of 10 p.m., officials were still at the scene. Officials found multiple shell casings in the area. The police department said they do not have any information about potential victims or suspects at this time, but they do not believe the victim or home were targeted. Three snowmobilers died in separate crashes in northern Wisconsin over the weekend, bringing the state's total this year to 10. The DNR said that while all three crashes are under investigation, the primary causes of snowmobile deaths are caused by speed, alcohol, inexperience, and rider error. The agency urged people to follow safety rules and be aware of changing conditions. Last year, 13 snowmobilers died in crashes in Wisconsin. The pace of Americans getting COVID-19 vaccine booster shots has reached a new low, and many public health experts are concerned. About 64% of Americans are fully vaccinated against coronavirus with at least their initial two-dose series. 28% have received a booster shot, but the pace of people getting boosters is the lowest it's been in months and since the CDC first recommended boosters for seniors and other at-risk adults in September. Disposable face masks have generated a mountain of medical waste during the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, a company in Taiwan called MiniWiz is giving those old face masks a new life by recycling them into wireless phone chargers. MiniWiz CEO Arthur Huang says the robot took inspiration from Disney's WALL-E robot, a robotic device called Transpresso shreds medical masks, heats them up, and turns them into a plastic-like dough. All that plastic creates a hard shell, which is made into a wireless charger using electronic parts. These plastic waste, especially the mask, is actually almost 100% made from plastic. It's polypropylene based. A report from the conservation group Ocean Asia finds masks could take a long could take as long as 450 years to break down, slowly turning into microplastics that can harm marine wildlife and ecosystems. There's more to come on News 3 Now at Noon. Inflation approaches an all-time high, and no status update here. We're still addicted to our smartphones. I'm Diane King-Hall at the CBS Broadcast Center. Of those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. You're watching News 3 Now at Noon. Your energy bills have never been higher, up 30 to 60% depending on how you heat your home. Andrew Larson here with Larson Home Services. We can help lower your energy bills and make your home more cozy. It starts with a visit by our Dr. Energy Saver team. We'll pinpoint your problem areas and show you how we can help. And now's the time to call. With 75% off installation labor, financing for 60 months, and a $100 Visa gift card when you sign up for a Dr. Energy Saver package. Call now because this doctor makes house calls. RHD Plumbing has the most reliable professionals in the industry. With honesty you can trust to deliver quality products and workmanship dedicated to being the best. RHD Plumbing now offers complete bathroom and kitchen remodeling, the best plumbers, and everything else you need to finish your dream project. For your home or business, get the job done right the first time with no surprises with the reliable, honest, and dedicated plumbing professionals of RHD Plumbing. Proud partner of the Green Bay Packers. In one instant, an accident can change your life. Gin Grass Thompson & Walks has assembled the top award-winning personal injury lawyers to win the biggest settlements and awards for Wisconsin victims. If you've been injured, contact Gin Grass Thompson & Walks for a free consultation. McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo should probably be called McGann Furniture and Flooring because we're the area's oldest and most experienced floor covering store. Our friendly staff will explain the many types of flooring available, answer questions, and make suggestions so you can choose what's best for your home and lifestyle. We always offer free in-home measurements and estimates and use the finest installers in the entire area. And remember, at McGann's, we don't 
inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Guys, if you're suffering from erectile dysfunction, Peak Performance for Men has a natural solution that can help you today. That's right. Stop wasting money on pills and inferior technology that hurts and just masks your ED. Fix it for good. The best part? Our ED treatment is non-invasive, painless, and you can get back to your natural functionability after just a few short in-office sessions. Call us today and mention this ad and your initial consultation is free. We are Madison's trusted specialist and only national erectile dysfunction provider. Call Peak Performance for Men today. But Senator Ron Johnson is putting... You know what's interesting? Liberal groups have already spent $12 million falsely attacking me and engaging the politics of personal destruction. Their allies in the media have dutifully piled on. Why? Because they can't defend the disastrous results of their policies. During this campaign, I intend to discuss issues that impact your life. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message because I'm concerned about inflation, open borders, and rising crime, just like you. A new measure of inflation shows that prices rose to a near record in January. According to the Labor Department, wholesale prices shot up 9.7% on an annual basis. Supply chain bottlenecks continue to weigh on prices. As states roll back mask mandates, 3M is revising its forecast. The nation's biggest maker of N95 masks says sales will not be as strong as previously predicted. Masks had become a billion-dollar business for 3M. The first year of the pandemic, it raked in $1.4 billion. And last year, mask sales rose to $1.5 billion. Compare that to pre-pandemic sales of $600 million. Noom gets a heavy slap on the wrist. The diet app agreed to pay $62 million to resolve allegations that it tricked customers into signing up for so-called risk-free trials. Those trials then turned into costly renewals that were hard to cancel. Noom has agreed to send email reminders to customers before their trial expires. And where's my phone? According to a survey from reviews.org, 71% of people check their phone within 10 minutes of waking up. The the majority of people can't leave their device at home without feeling uneasy. 45% of Americans call it their most valuable possession. More than half said it would be their top belonging to save in a house fire. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to CBSMoneyWatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Diane Kinghall. Thank you, Diane. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrial is up 356. The Nasdaq up 227. The S&P 500 up 52. Well, the IRS says people are already starting to receive their tax refunds. It says nearly 13 million tax returns have been processed. The average refund has been around $2,200. The IRS began accepting returns on January 24th. You have until April 18th of this year to file your income tax returns. Experts say a Russian invasion into Ukraine could drive gas prices here in the U.S. even higher. Errol Barnett explains. Now, typically, we see gas prices dip at this time of year when it's colder and Americans are spending more time at home. But 2022 is different. Take a look at this. AAA reports that the national average of a price of gasoline jumped to $3.49 in the past week. That's 19 cents more than a month ago and nearly a dollar more than a year ago. Now, the main cause of this recent increase is the high cost of crude oil. That is key here. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, more than half the cost of gas we pay is dependent on that price of oil. And Russia produces more than a tenth of the world's oil supply, so any military action by Russia in Ukraine could certainly send the price of oil over $100 a barrel. Now, it's important to note that while the U.S. is not a major importer of Russian oil, if the global market value of a barrel jumps, um, certainly there'll be a domino effect, and Americans will feel that here at the pump. So what happens overseas could certainly hit you in your wallet. Errol Barnett, CBS News, Washington. And the Washington Post says the White House and top Democratic lawmakers are also considering a gas tax holiday, which would pause fees at the pump to combat rising prices. Well, up next at noon, a Florida teen breaks a Guinness World Record, plus your latest farm numbers. And Chris is back with your latest forecast when we come back. Important health care announcement. 
If people tell you your TV is too loud, or if listening in some environments has become difficult, we are requesting your participation in a special program called the 30-Day Challenge. Hearing Life Hearing Centers are seeking people with hearing difficulties to evaluate a new digital mini hearing aid now being released. To take part in this event, you must call. Please get a pencil and write down the number below. All people with hearing aids or hearing difficulties are wanted to take part in the 30-day challenge evaluating a new high-tech device that sits discreetly behind your ear. This hearing aid is Bluetooth enabled and is rechargeable. All hearing assessments are performed at no charge for those taking part in the challenge. Participants will try these hearing aids for 30 days. Call the number below and take the Hearing Life 30-day challenge. Find your style with Patriot Lighting. Choose from our huge selection of ceiling fans. Our ceiling fans add elegance to any room and reduce energy costs all year round. We carry a great selection of styles and finishes, so you're sure to find the look that's right for you. Save today and receive a $10 rebate on all stock Patriot Lighting ceiling fans over $50. View all of our lighting options now on Menards.com. Save big money at Menards. What's going on outside? We all want to be warm and cozy inside, especially this winter. We're USA Insulation, and we fix cold homes. When you have inferior insulation, it doesn't matter how much you crank up your furnace. Your expensive warm air still leaks out of your walls and attic. When we inject our premium foam into your walls, it's like wrapping a coat around your entire home. And just wait until you see how much money that saves you. So stop freezing and start saving. USA Insulation. Eat barbecue for a good cause. We'll tell you about an upcoming benefit for families of two fallen firefighters. And we have hairspray tickets for our question of the day winner. Rain tomorrow, but will it change the snow Thursday? Chris has the forecast tomorrow morning from 430 to 7. Her love for sled dog racing led her from Alaska's Iditarod to a successful children's book series. The sled dogs really teach us about life. Her next chapter, straight out of the movies. Charlotte Deleste visits the Musher Mama Thursday on News 3 Now at 6. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Let's check in now with Pam Yonke from the Midwest Farm Report on this warmer Tuesday. Yep, exactly. Warmer, except my markets are ice cold today, Mark. Uh, a lot of uh, information flowing out of the Ukraine and Russia, tapering some of the enthusiasm for our commodities. We had seen people kind of roll into corn and soybeans as safe haven while we tried to figure out what was going on. As tensions seem to ease internationally, people are less interested in pulling some of their money off the table for corn and beans. So prepare yourself for those numbers. I want our poultry owners to also prepare. Actually, any bird owners out there if you've got uh you know uh, like i said chickens backyard chickens if you've got ducks or geese or anything like that get ready i talked to dr darlene conkle our wisconsin state veterinarian at the department of ag trade and consumer protection stories are popping up all over especially the east coast and southeast of a new version of a hot avian influenza that's impacting poultry flocks all across the most latest that uh, showed up is in kentucky now when i talked to darlene yesterday she said she's having almost daily conversations with veterinarians kind of across the United States trying to track what's going on with this avian influenza. There is nothing that we have as far as, you know, you and I are in the habit of thinking vaccines. There's nothing we've got as far as pharmaceuticals to protect our birds from this avian influenza, this particular strain. It changes every year and now it's coming in on migratory birds. So again, I want to remind you, if you own any birds at all, uh, the first place you can turn is the Department of Ag Trade and Consumer Protection's website for biological security measures you should be putting in place now. The other is to remind you that if you do own birds, even a handful of hens in the backyard, by state law, you are required to register where those birds are kept with the Wisconsin Livestock Identification Consortium, their website, WIID. 
www.avianinfluenza.org. And that will help the state, if avian influenza should appear, that will help the state track any birds that might be in that path. Very, very critical on biosecurity, though. Today, barrel cheese was unchanged at 195. 40-pound block cheese up 7.5 at 199. Double-A butter up 7.5 at 286 a pound. You know, the only upside on that avian influenza story, Mark, is when birds start coming north, that is a sign that these moderate temperatures will slowly lead us to spring. <laughs> well, I guess that could one good thing, Gotta I guess. Gotta find a silver lining. <laughs> Gotta find a silver lining. <laughs> All right, Pat, thank you. A Florida teen is breaking records with his height at just 15 years of age. Olivier Rio is 7 feet 5. He stands as the tallest teen in the world, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. Rio is originally from Canada, has a size 20 shoe. His height isn't just a coincidence. It runs in the family. His mom is 6'2". His dad is 6'8". When I was 10, 11, 12, I started going and it was getting fast because like every week I was like getting I yeah I was like taller than every kids in my school. Ryu's favorite hobby is playing basketball something his coach says he's very skilled at. I wonder what he's going to do in the future Chris. <laughs> I might be playing basketball. I know what Chris is going to be doing. He's going to be giving us the forecast. <laughs> yeah, still hoping for snow at some point this winter because we really haven't had a significant snow event, and we are starting to knock on the door of March. At this point, it's mid-February. A couple weeks from now, it will be the third month of the year. But I'll tell you, with March on the way, we also have some 40s on the way in this forecast. But we're also tracking rain rain to a wintry mix. There we go. And also still some uncertainty as we actually start to move towards that system a little bit later in the week. Now today is a day that I believe is crucial as a forecaster. The reason for that, we're finally seeing that storm come ashore. It came ashore this morning. We're already starting to see some snows across parts of the Mountain West. And eventually this is going to be working its way towards parts of the Midwest. But I want to show you something. Let me show you how the two different models really begin to shape this up. This is model number one. It starts us off with rain over to snow and then actually has a little bit of some heavier snow that moves through and works its way on top of us. Model number two has our rain, but then it keeps the snow well to our south, barely grazing parts of Racine and Kenosha counties. So we are 48 hours out. This is typically a window where we're typically pretty confident in how exactly things are going to play out, but we're still seeing complete differences between heavy snow and no snow at all. The pattern this entire winter has been for things to slide by to our south. So I'm going to bank on that one because I actually want it to snow. So odds are it's not going to happen. That being said, we're at 30 degrees right now. Mostly cloudy skies. Winds out of the south and east at 17 miles per hour. Our wind chill still at 18. Now we start to look ahead. We're going to keep that cloud cover around. Temperatures top out in the mid 30s around 4 o'clock. They begin to fall as we approach 6 o'clock. But I want to show you how temperatures really begin to respond overnight. We're at 33 by the time we get you towards 7. It's now 1230 just after midnight. Winds are out of the south. Temperatures actually begin to increase. We're at 38 degrees now. 40s by the time we are waking up tomorrow at 7 o'clock in the morning. We're going to keep a lot of cloud cover and as we move into the afternoon now 330. Here we go. That rain starts to break out over parts of southern Wisconsin. But as a cold front comes through 830 tomorrow night, we're back into the 30s after being into the mid 40s. And yes, we have that chance of some flurries, a little bit of a wintry mix as things begin begin to wind down. So what happens after that? There's a model that's in between the big two that I showed you, and this is probably a little bit more realistic. Perhaps some light snow comes into our area, but most of that heaviest snow will probably stay just south of that state line into parts of northern Illinois, and that moves out of here quickly. You start asking about numbers and probably less than an inch of snow for us here in Madison, but it could be accumulating snow and a lot of it as you start to work your way towards places like Racine and Kenosha County. So we are going to keep a very close eye on this, especially today. Today. Today is a big day to really nail down the track of that system. And then we could be doing it again. Perhaps another system comes our way by the middle of next week. I'll tell you, at this point, it looks to track farther to our north. If our southerly trend continues, maybe 
we get something out of that one, but I'm not going to hold my breath, Mark. Well, it's been fun watching you try to figure this out. I, I bet everyone has looked at us and said, we are not jealous of any meteorologist <laughs> in this part of the country. Folks in Chicago, I think, have it easy with this one, but on this northern side, Madison, Milwaukee, we are struggling with this one. Maybe we'll learn more by this yeah. afternoon. Absolutely. All right, Chris, thank you. And there's more to come on News for Now and Noon. I'm not, let's, up next, let's see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. If you've ever walked through the food court at the mall on a busy afternoon, you've probably seen and even tasted what we're whipping up today. Any ideas what it could be? News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. People have been wondering, what's that into Lindsay? But it's really what Lindsay's gotten into, Planet Fitness. And now through February 16th, you can join for zero enrollment and only $10 a month. Get glowing and feel fit tacular for zero enrollment, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends February 16th. If you stutter on the phone, speech to speech is for you. Hi, Nihada. This is Andy Smith, and I, I was calling to see if our... Home loan has been approved. A specially trained operator revoices the conversation to the person on the other end of the line. Hi, Nahada. This is Andy Smith, and I was calling to see if our home loan has been approved. Oh, Andy, we have great news. You've been approved for the full amount. To learn more about speech-to-speech -speech relay service, go to wisconsinrelay.com. Do you suffer with pain, numbness, and tingling in the hands or feet? Commonly diagnosed as peripheral neuropathy? Are you taking drugs such as Lyrica or Gabapentin that have serious side effects and often do not relieve your symptoms? Your doctor has told you you may just have to live with the pain. Peripheral neuropathy is a result of damage to the nerves, often causing burning, weakness, pain, numbness, tingling, and the most debilitating balance problems. Our facility uses multiple therapies therapeutic methods to help give you relief from neuropathy symptoms with no injections and no drugs. You may start seeing relief after only a few sessions. To determine if your neuropathy symptoms can be relieved, we will do a consultation to evaluate the extent of your condition. Call us today to schedule your neuropathy consultation to find out if you're a candidate for our therapy. Call today. Provide for your family. Do good things in the community. Help out your neighbors. You've been there for so many others. Now, we're here for you. Your local Wisconsin Energy and Emergency Assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home and your heat and power on. Apply now for a hand up. People have been wondering, what's that into Lindsay? But it's really what Lindsay's gotten into, Planet Fitness. And now through February 16th, you can join for zero enrollment and only $10 a month. Get glowing and feel fit-tacular for zero enrollment, $10 a month, cancel any time. Deal ends February 16th. If you've ever walked through the food court at the mall on a busy afternoon, you've probably seen and even tasted what we're whipping up today. I'm talking about bourbon chicken. And although you might think this dish has Asian origins, it's actually named after Bourbon Street in New Orleans. And today, we're going to share our version of it with you. The first thing we do is cut some boneless, skinless chicken breasts or thighs into chunks. Next, we coat them with a mixture we made by combining some cornstarch, garlic powder, ground red pepper, and a touch of salt. These get sauteed in a bit of oil until the chicken is golden and no pink remains. While they finish up, we combine some jalapeno pepper jelly, a bit of soy sauce, and a generous splash of bourbon. Then we toss this flavor pack sauce over the chicken and there you have it, a dish that's just as good over rice, which gives it its Asian flair, or when served Mardi Gras style, with or without the beads. The recipe for our simple to make bourbon chicken is online now, so you can make it as soon as tonight. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a New Orleans inspired way mm -hmm. for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Is it good? Mm hmm. <laughs>
Here's Chris now with one final check of your forecast. All right, so I already don't have that much hair as it is. We'll see how much I have left by the end of this week because we're trying to break down that challenge for you folks. But know that today we're in the 30s, mid 40s tomorrow. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock.